Welcome back to Metropole TV. This is The Smart Investor. My name is Ali Khan Sachu, and we're in the second half of our show. And I've got George Bodo here with me. George Karibu. Nice to see you. Uh, Always good to see you. All right. George, we had the big uh, central bank event today. Um, no change in interest rates. Yeah. Was that what you were expecting? Yes. Yes. Largely, I was expecting. You were the, expecting that. The, the central bank to maintain a very neutral path. Yes. Uh, and significantly, one for me, the most significant um, takeaway from the press communique. Yes. And the last couple of press communique is that the central bank has been overtaken. Um, I think for me, they have been compromised. That's Compr a word, actually. Yes. By That's a harsh a word. Very, very aggressive fiscal position. Uh, uh, so we're not, we are overly loose. We are in a fiscal dominance period. Yes. Typically, in a fiscal dominance period, the central banks cannot engage in some aggression. They yes. cannot raise interest rates because then that means that the government, on the debt side, yes. and the, the government's borrowing costs become very expensive. So, so it, if you look at, for instance, if you look at our fiscal deficit yeah. over the last three fiscal years and in, into the next fiscal year, we are talking about something north of 7%. It was the last, the, the, rather, three fiscal years ago, we were talking about 9%. It has barely moved. Treasury is projecting about 6%. I'm projecting about 8%. And given the fact that I read one of the news that they've been hiding the deficit figures. You saw in that. Some well, was that credible, that report? Well, came, coming from the PBO, yes. then it's credible because PBO, part of the task is to actually scan through the budget papers mm. that is submitted to Parliament from Treasury. They, I, see, they, I think they largely sit in an advisory capacity to Parliament's budget committee. So I trust what they say. So I think I expect the fiscal deficit to still be larger than what Treasury is projecting. Now, what, what does that mean? Yes, that what does it there's mean? There's going to be an uh, aggressive um, uh, domestic debt market activity. That the debt they're going to sell more bonds. Yes, they're going to sell more bonds. Mm. Now, in that scenario, then any monetary policy stance has to take into account the fact that there's the so much supply. There's so much supply. Hmm. And so they cannot keep bo treasuries borrowing rates at a certain level. They've got to keep it constant, hmm. lest the government defaults. So they have to be sensitive. The default they, they is a very, to, very well, big word. Well, <laughs> the, the thing is that the monetary policy as it is today is being held hostage hmm. by the fiscal policy. That's one. Um, well, let's go back. Yeah. What's monetary policy? Yes. Well, if you look at, go back to post-World War II, governments were trying to uh, crack their heads on how do you get economies to jumpstart. Mm. Uh, some of the war ravages coming at the UK, France, Germany. People were thinking, how do you jumpstart economy? Mm. And then in that era came in one of the most brilliant brains, uh, post-war brains in, in John, Maynard Keynes, who came up with all... Are you a Keynes? Yeah, yeah I'm, well, I subscribe to some, some of his thoughts. Mm. But Keynes was all about, if the market is failing, how do you, how does the government come in and jumpstart the economy? Yes. yes. So one of the things he said, that the economy cannot be jumpstarted when the cost of the price of money, which is interest rates, yes. essentially price of money, yes. is allowed to follow some natural path. So the government has had to intervene and set uh, an optimum level of interest rates, which is the basis of Monetary Policy mm. Committee. Basically, the setting of price of money was left to the government. Mm. And it was all about demand management, because Keynes was all about attaining full employment. In fact, Keynes at some point remarkably joked that if the economy was so weak, the government could actually hide money, banknotes, in mm. jars mm. underground, and then employ thousands of people mm. to dig them up. That will, create, is, yes. that will create an employment. Yeah. <laughs> and the benefits... The, the is that the same as the helicopter theory? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, modern day people talk about, we talk about modern monetary theory, yes. MMT. Yes. Mean, you must have come across yes, yes, MMTs. Yes. Yes. So it's all about um, helicopters. Yes. <laughs> helicopter <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. It goes back to... Now, what, what, what do we see today in Kenya? Mm. We see... The demand side and supply side very, very weak. Uh, if you look at private sector investments, the chart, I was looking at the chart, for instance, private sector gross capital formation down. Mm. 
um, Stanbic PMI, which is also measured below 50, measures, is below 50. Mm. Um, and on the demand side, look at private consumption, mm. took a dip last year. Um, uh, and back on the supplier side, there was no credit, private sector credit, it's still below 5%. It's average 5% over the last six mm. months. Now, what does is, what is monetary policy play today? Mm. Uh, is it more on the supply side or is it the demand side? I don't know. It's, I think the jury is still out there. But getting back to the MPC, yes, let, let, let's getting back, back to the MPC yeah. communique, they, they're, they're talking about some items there. Yeah. And, and top of the mind is they're talking about current account deficit. Yes. narrowing um, saying it's narrowing to 4.5 percent of gdp in the 12 months to april yeah. 2019 see, if you look at, if you look at it's on the face of it it looks good but mm. if you get down what is driving the narrowing, narrowing of the current account deficit is the fact that one is um so most of the sg related imports mm. are, i mean happy. the project are, it's done um, yes they're on the residual phase mm. are we done with most of the imports and that's what's bringing the but it's supposed to be accompanied by a corresponding rise in exports. Are um, we not having it's that? No, it's no, we're not having that. Yes. If you look at the export chart, it's coming down. As a share mm. of GDP is coming down. That means that that narrowing of the mm. current account deficit. Is, is happening only because of one side? Yes, it's, it's, on the, it's one side. It's mm. unidirectional. Mm. And it's not sustainable. Now, this is some of the things that the, the MPC, uh, for me, they didn't look at. They haven't mm. looked at it. Mm. Well, it's good to say, oh, current account narrowing. But what is driving the narrowing? Is it sustainable? Is it, like, is it coming from the right side of the mm. balance sheet? It's not. Let me go through some of these line items. Yes. Inflation, 6.6% from 4.4% in March. Yes. That's a big jump, month on month. Yes, it's a big jump. However, yes. the, the news is not on the headline inflation. It's on, it's, it's on the core, the non-food, the non-fuel inflation. Yes. It's still going down. It's still going down. So you're no, not worried about I'm this? I'm not worried you're, about the headline inflation. You think this inflation. is a transi now, transitory... It's, it's transitory... Food, down, food related. I mean, talk about the rains are here with us. Yeah. Well, we still depend on rain for mm. agriculture. So the rains are here. Probably three months from now when we start harvesting, the food prices will start coming down. So mm. I think for me it's transitory. Okay. But I pay more attention on the, on the core inflation, mm. um, which has been coming down. Yes. And for me it's a signal that the demand is still low. And if you look at the commentary, mm. the demand is still very weak. Yes. The demand <coughs> is still very, very weak. <coughs> <clears throat> Let me jump to FX reserves, all-time high, $10.056 billion. I was talking about Zambia a few days ago, yeah. $1.2 billion. Is that a good sign? Should we, do we, we have should not be enough celebrating. ammunition? No, I don't think, because look at, um, look at our debt service in the next fiscal year. Well, the total debt service comes about $2.8 billion, uh, starting with the redemption, which mm. is in June. Yes. So that, that reduces this yes. straight away. And we have about a total USD obligations, about $2.8 billion. Mm. That's close to $3, mm. $3 billion. That's not enough. Yes. Once you start paying out the debt, then talking uh, two months from now, mm. we'll be back to where we were before. So for me, it's transitory again. It's okay. transitory. Okay. It's so not something I'd, I would pay attention to. Okay. Now. Yes. But, 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 but what one can say there is a bit of a cushion there. It's not the a bit of a cushion. Well, well, the market is all about expectations yes so you're okay so your expectations are this number this is the high mark yes. high water mark yes and for me my expectation is that it's not going to mount to anything when you talk about for instance the currency market mm. yes it, it can easily be shrugged off it's yes. less, it, i mean you cannot pop champagne over that okay <laughs> <laughs> easy yeah <laughs> private sector credit growth 4.9 percent in the 12 months to April That's compared to 4.3. But weak. it was down at zero. Hasn't it, wow. hasn't it risen somewhat? It's, it's, what's driving it? Yes. It's, it's not, well, it's 5% it's, it's for an economy that was used to a growth of about 20%. Yes, it's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. Mm. It's, it's nothing. And is this all about the, f uh, the lack of credit availability for the medium and small enterprises? Absolutely. Are they the ones who've been squeezed here? Absolutely, yeah. they're mm. being squeezed out. Now, yeah. you, you, you <coughs> saw that the central bank has made a push in that direction with uh, its Stawi. Yeah. Is that a good idea? It's a good idea on the commercial side. Yes. But I think that uh, my view, and I wrote a whole article about this, that 
the central bank should not be commingling, commingling with the commercial side of it. Yes. Uh, policy and regulation. I think on the policy side, they have a lot they can do. And number one is that the central bank has the capacity mm. to roll a guarantee scheme, mm. an a MSME guaranteeing scheme. Mm. It could take the form of central bank um, underwriting credit risks mm. on behalf of banks. Um, you would have preferred to see that? I would prefer to see that. It's much more impact. Mm. It's much, it democratizes credit in, 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 in the current context. Um, they could ha so they could have a guarantee scheme. Yes. Or they could actually give, provide liquidity to banks for own lending. Mm. And I gave an example of Central Bank of Nigeria, which is actually providing liquidity to the and, banks. To the that. banks for own lending. And they've prescribed the rate. Yes. They, they, they're giving you the, the funding at 2%. You yeah. shall not lend it above 9%. And it, it's worked. If you look at the disbandment figures, I think that's much more, that's a much more um, lasting impact. And obviously on the fiscal side, mm. I still believe that um, the central bank can force an alignment between the monetary and fiscal side, which for me right now, they're still misaligned. Okay. Yes. You think they can push that? They can push that. They have the space to push that. They are the fiscal agent of the national government, mm. but I think they hold some economic advisory position. Mm. In that sense, they can force an alignment because what we have today is um, is acute crowding out of the private sector. Yes. I give an example today. Central bank. So the national government is yeah. borrowing long term at thirteen percent. Yes, and the cap right now is at thirteen percent. Mm. It's a no brainer for commercial banks. Yeah. Now, how do you get governments to borrow at six percent mm. and then create a disincentive for banks to Did keep packing money? Didn't that happen under President Kibaki in the first few years of his government? When we had lending rates at 1%, remember did that? Did that T-bill rates came yes, down? 1%. How did that happen? How did they engineer that situation? Well, it's a mix of issues. My view, the first thing is you have, in the current environment, to have a fiscal consolidation. Mm. Now, if you look at Kibaki government, the budget deficit, the, at some, I think the first few years, mm. we had a balanced budget. Mm. Yes. Now, when we... Towards the, 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 the end of his time, when we had the power sharing, uh, there was a deficit, but it was very small, mm. and they could manage it. So basically, the policy was, let's not depend the, the, the domestic he, he market. Was and he yes. Was, yes, and he maintained a very narrow budget deficit. Yeah. And let's not depend our activities on the debt market, because we do send the wrong signal mm. in the market, and then market keeps premium as rate, and eventually, before you know it, you crowd out the private sector. Mm. That was a very excellent policy. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing happening. Now, here. What the opposite is happening now. Mm. Well, I don't know what the government's idea of fiscal consolidation. They keep talking about fiscal consolidation. You don't think there's a clear message? There's no clear message from the national government. Mm. The message they're sending the market is that we are still here. We want to take in as much as we can. Yes. And that's usually not a very clear signal. Yeah. Let me now ask you about GDP growth. I mean, you know, last year was a good year, 6.3% yeah, yeah. headline number. Yeah. We can argue about the underlying. Yeah. Um, the, the central bank is talking, saying, you know, that, they, that they're expecting, uh, notwithstanding that growth, they're saying growth remained resilient in the first quarter of 2019, and they're expecting it growth to be supported by agricultural production. MSMEs and the service sector increased FDI in a stable macroeconomic environment. Do well, you agree with that? Well, I just say that I've just finished reading Diana Coyle's book. And yes. She writes about our fiction, the history of fiction GDP. She tries to discount um, a lot of aspects of GDP mm. as a measure of, well, essentially economic welfare. Yes. And if you remember, when the National Bureau released the statistics and everybody was like, we can't feel the GDP. No. Yes, Where is it? can't eat it. <laughs> yes. We can't feel it in our pockets. Yes. We talk about 6.3%, which is the highest growth in about eight years. Yeah. But we can't feel it in our pockets. Well, I tend to be very careful when I talk about GDP. Yes. Well, GDP by its measure is a measure of um, uh, market value. Yeah. Of, of the production, of the output in a yeah. country. I have tried to unpack GDP for 2018. I still can't find where the growth was coming from. Agriculture. Well, the, that's a problem mm. with agriculture. Mm. It's agriculture is not making money to the economy. Yeah. 80% of agriculture is subsistence farming. Mm. Subsistence farming has never made money. But if people have enough food, you know, there's a better well, there's, there's a bit more circulation and there's better diffusion in agriculture because well, everyone has a shamba. Well, but 
the fiscal multiply in agriculture is not visible because the government spending on agriculture sector is, is n well, they have never spent on agriculture sector. It's not sector. commensurate with the size of agriculture, is yes, it? It's yes. tiny. Even the private sector funding mm. that goes into agriculture has never been that commensurate. That's number one. Number two is that agriculture is rain fed. Last year we had a very good rainfall. We did. Very good rainfall. I don't know what's going to happen this year. Yeah. It came in late. Yes. It's not optimal. Yeah. Some areas not receiving optimal rainfall. It could be that that figure could be down this year. Yes. If, 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 if well, it's never. It's, you can make projection based on, 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 on factors, beyond, especially when you talk about heavenly matters. Yes. God coming into question. <laughs> <laughs> rainfall. You just got to go and study <laughs> meteorology. That, that's what the problem I is. Think, you uh, I think economists that. in Kenya have to be part-time meteorologists. There you have to be. <laughs> uh, because it makes such a big difference. Because a third of our economy, uh, GDP is coming from outputs, coming from agriculture sector. Yes. It's all rain dependent. Yeah. You've got to study the, the weather patterns. Yes. You know, when, when is rain going to come? Is it it's optimal? It's becoming much more extreme now, weather patterns, right? Yeah, it's becoming more extreme. I think... The, um, from my childhood, I don't the, remember. The, you know, it used to be cyclone, regular, like, clockwork. What do you call that cyclone that hit Mozambique into Malawi? Yes, yes. That, um, I've forgotten the name. It took most Two. of our rain. Two, two. Took most of our yes. rain. Yes. It was sucked it down. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's called Kenneth or something like that. Yes, it was, yes. Yeah. Um, I think for I, me, sorry. Yeah, no, you carry on. I think for me, um, the question of, for, and talk, answer, getting back to your question, mm. is where am I seeing GDP this year? Yes, where are you seeing it? I think my view is that we are still going to be sub 5%. Sub 5? Yeah, in terms of output. Um, but I need to poke some holes on the GDP today. I think the GDP understates the extent of service in this economy. Because I saw data which says half our economy is a service economy. Yes. Yes. And how do we capture that, those data it's points? A, it's, it's, a, it's a trouble for statisticians worldwide, mm. and more so given an, a, an emerging country like Kenya. I think they need to find a way of capturing services. I think do the contribution is quite big. So do you think uh, the performance would be better if it was properly calculated? Yes. Yes. It is. I don't think... If I look at our GDP today, look, um, and going back to the book I've just read, um, Diana called, she talks about GDP. The original intention of GDP was mm. to measure the physical, the countable mm. production. Yes. Things you could see. Now, Services you can't. Increasingly, mm. and economies, economies like, and especially economies like Kenya, yeah. economies are becoming weightless. Mm. They're becoming in more and more weightless. How do you measure that a weightless economy? Look mm. at the United States today. Mm. It's technology driven. Yes. Yeah, you can hail a ride. Mm. In Kenya, Nairobi, you can hail a ride. Yeah. Do you think that's going to GDP today? It's, you don't think it's being measured? I don't think it's being measured. We are hailing our rides today. Yes, yes, all of us. Yes. And actually, there's been massive price disinflation. That's if you true. look at it compared to what we were paying when we'd have to call up our cab Look ride. at your phones today. Yeah. You're paying much less for a higher quality phone. That's right. All items in the technology space. How is that being kept in GDP? It's not yeah. being kept. Yes. It's not being kept. So I think there's an... Is that one of the reasons why inflation in the developed world has not taken off? Because yes. classic economic theory would tell you when they pumped in all this crazy money that at some point you go back to the Weimar Republic and you need a <laughs> barrel of cash. Is that why? Is it the pressure of technology which has kept... And I think that they've, in the United States they've really tried to come with some initiatives like hedonic price, in this in, in, mm. uh, uh, price indicators that measures the, 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 the growth in the quality but the decline in pricing. Yes, yes. So you've got to have to capture that the price has gone so down. So you're getting a better product at a cheaper price. Cheaper price. price. Yes. But it has to feature in the price, uh, in the, mm. the price bucket. Mm. And they've tried to capture that. And that's why, actually, you're right mm. that you're seeing that um, I'm just wondering. The OECD countries and, and even the America on the other side, they're struggling to jump such inflation. M maybe the jump starts with tariffs. <laughs> the tariff holder. Oh, my God. Don't talk about tariffs. No, but let, you know, if you look around the world, yeah. you know, trade figures have started to slow down yeah. quite dramatically. Yeah. You look at this intensifying tariff war. The world doesn't feel as go-go as it did last year or the year before. Do you agree with that? And yeah. then do you think we're at risk, uh, uh, firstly, as Kenya, and secondly, as Africa, if this thing goes you know, ballistic? W w will we suffer because we're now more correlated with China, for example? 
I think so. Uh, two things. One is that, the, that Christine Lagarde, the IMF uh, yes. managing director, is talking about a synchronized slowdown. Yeah. I think that's a, another threat on one side. Yes. Um, you have the your friend Trump. Is <laughs> He's not my friend. <laughs> up in the ant. Yes. With his war with China. Yeah. I think that the, the emerging economies, especially those that are dependent on China, have to look keenly yeah. and, and, and evaluate this. Mm. Uh, well, I'm not a trade expert like you, but mm. I think there's some uh, slack that yes. could come out of that. No, definitely. Yes. You, would have, you would think I mean, so. So for instance, I think China would have to, to a certain extent, slow down its uh, overseas uh, 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 Belt investments. Road. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. I, I, I'd agree with yes. you. And there's and, some, and, some and people and are worried that they don't... Kenya would, would want one of the casualties. Yes. Well, they declined. Uh, so do you think that was a consequence of the slowdown? I'm not sure it was a consequence, but I think on that front, the yes. Chinese money mm. uh, and, and, and it's the not biggest... Free, is it the, it's they're not Santa Claus anymore. Yes. I think they're no, it's not a, it's not a gravity anymore. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And do you think, therefore, are we doing the right, uh, are we balancing? I noticed that Ambassador uh, Monica Juma was in the US, in Washington. Do you think from a geopolitical and foreign policy perspective that we're playing our cards well or not? Well, I think it, Kenya historically, we've always been at crossroads. I mean, you remember in the 1960s in the Cold War, mm. we had the senior Odinga siding yes. with Russia, and we had, well, the senior Jomo siding with the West. The, the, the West. We were, and, and all these things kept grinding. Mm. Oh, by the way, we still have the Russia stored in Kisumu. Yes, yes. Um, needs an upgrade. Mm. Uh, well, the thing is that in, in today's environment, geopolitical environment, I think Kenya finds itself at another crossroads. Yes. In my view. Yes. Uh, do you think we'll have to choose, or do you think we can be a balancer? We can I think balance. we can play a balance, but Kenya's foreign policy pronunciation is never that clear. Mm. They don't lay down on the cards. Yes. You never know what the government's up to. But maybe that's strategic ambiguity. Ah, it's called the policy of ambiguity in Israel. <laughs> don't you never don't, know. It's like don't, Trump. You never don't know. Con don't con confirm, don't deny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and looking closer to home on that front, you know, there's been this friction with Somalia. Is that important from an economic point of view? I think for me it's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. But we've got a lot of trade going on between us and them, right? Eastly, that's that economy. Well, Uganda was a top export destination last year. Lo uh, ours, ours. Ours. Yes, Kenya's top export destination. Second. Um, second should have been oh, should have been the EU. EU, yes. Okay, because biggest import is China. China, yes. Okay, second, the EU, I think. EU, again. I'm not sure about that. Okay, but I think the EU and America should be one of the yeah. second. So, do you, so if you just look at it from that perspective, I would be more about Uganda. Yes, a diplomatic tiff with Uganda. Yeah, would would worry me. Not would worry you yeah, more. Would not Somalia. Okay, yeah. okay. And is it impacting, for example, there's a TIF now between Rwanda and Uganda. Is it impacting the Rwandan economy? Uh, well, I know yet. that some Kenyan goods destined for Rwanda are still held up. Oh, wow. Port. Okay. Well, all of them were in, um, they were in South Africa the other day. Yes. I, hope, hope I they were, saw them. They were sitting next to each other. I hope the, someone put them in the room and <laughs> armed some sense in there. <laughs> well, that's, that's my... Well, but getting back to Montreal yes. policy... I think that monetary policy going forward is going to be boring. Yeah. Staying around here? Staying around there. There's very little room to maneuver. I've just said that the monetary policy today is being held hostage. But the fiscal policy... The fiscal, and but the number rate two caps. Is and that the rate caps. And the rate caps yes. is, has disabled the credit channel. Yeah. Which is one of... Because we have four channels which are very... Well, we have... F generally, we have four transmission mm. channels in Kenya. We have the, the credit channel, which is uh, one of the major... of the the, the exchange rate channel, uh, and for a tiny um, uh, interlinked economy like Kenya, uh, the credit, the exchange rate channel is very important. And, and, uh, What's your view on that? We had a couple of characters who <laughs> come in. <laughs> Kazutu was talking about a complete collapse. What, what do you think the about the IMF feeling? talked about of a currency. Yeah. Do you do you, do you buy into that stuff? Or? I think for me, it's a dicey argument. Exchange rate policies are very, very dicey for me. Mm. We have countries in the world that literally peg mm. currencies. Uh, we have countries in the world that are managed. Kenya is being told it's being well the managed. Do you think it's managed? I think in the situation that Kenya is in, it mm. makes sense to manage it. Mm. Yeah. I think we don't have the stomach to 
um, to handle those uh, volatilities for now. Um, I, I would, it's managed, yes, but mm. I think it makes sense to manage it mm. as it is. Mm. Because the correlation between the pr consumer price, price stability, and the exchange rate is very, very high. Mm. An exchange rate as a monetary trans transmission channel yes. is very high. That's an interesting point. And we have to make sure that th that channel mm. is well taken care of mm. because otherwise we would have um, a very, very high um, and, and arbitrary price increase on the, on, the pri on, the pri on the consumer side, which is yes. not good for us. Mm. Yeah. So I think I would, uh, my view is that it makes sense to do what they're doing right now. Yes. We need that stability on, the ex on that channel. Because also, I mean, on that channel, if that currency starts to depreciate, our debt to GDP is going to go Look, through the there's roof. There's a lot of stake, my view, is we have a huge foreign currency. That's right. Issue. It's like 51%. 51% of, yeah. of our public debt is yeah. in foreign currency. We've got to take care of that. That's right. We've got to purchasing the currencies, look at the currencies purchasing power. We don't want the purchasing power to depreciate. Yes. It's already depreciated so much. Yes. And I, sp I looked at the, the well, the, the regional casualties mm. note. Yes. Uh, well, I think one of the weakest points, in my view, was that the, when you can compare exchange, uh, exchange rates to, um, um, to the, the consumer price uh, mm. basket, mm. because for me, exchange rate is not a commodity. Yeah, it's not. So you can't do that commodity commodity comparison. Okay. It's like comparing oranges and apples. apples. Yes. Mm. So we've got to construct another framework for assessing the of evaluation or devaluation. IMF did it. Yeah. They had the, the um, an, an, a framework around the real effective exchange rate, and they came up with the, the, they ran some regression and One said, okay, fine. They said it's of value by seventeen percent, but I don't think that comparison worked. But however. I think that given where we are today, I think that it makes a lot of sense mm. to do what they're doing. I think so far the Central Bank has done a good job. Oh, I do. Yes. Uh, on that point, let me ask you a question. I saw today a Bloomberg headline saying this was the last MPC meeting in the current four-year term of Dr. Patrick Jirogi. Would you like to see Dr. Jirogi back there for another four years? Do you think he's done a good job? What's your perspective on that? <coughs> I think for me, um, on a scale of one to five, and, and this is slightly mm. my view, mm. I think it's fair for me. He's had a fair performance. Mm. Yeah, I don't know where that will be on a scale of one to five, maybe, maybe two and a half. Three. But could he have done anything given, I think given your fiscal situation? And I think situation. that the president, mm. um, I think the president in renewing the governor's contract, the question should be, what's next? Mm. What's next for the Central Bank of Kenya? What's next for price stability? Mm. What's next for monetary policy? Well, the governor came in, he did some mistakes, mm. on the, on the, especially on the financial stability side, took over some financial institutions. You don't think they should have I been? I don't think, I think. He was too preemptive? I th it too preemptive. I think he could have done something better. Mm. And I have, I talk about from experience. But I've that was a fast moving situation, Yes, right? I think he, know, he, he had some, well, I could say you could give the benefit of mm. new governor, mm. and I think the, the, the benefit of hindsight, he could have done it in the boardroom way. Mm. Um, he's changed his tactics so far. Um, but I think on the financial stability side, financial stability side he had a bit. I'm worried about a monetary policy mm. and the role of monetary policy in the economy today, especially. Well, you're saying in, it's blunted. It's especially in managing demand. Mm. Um, and I think the, the monetary policy in Kenya today has a big role in jump-starting demand, has a big role in, in, in attaining and jump-starting employment today mm. because we're not doing very well on the employment side. And I so think you're, we, you're asking for, for lower rates? Well, not really low rate. It's, it's, could we have other mechanisms? I think mm. they have so much levers. Mm. I give an example. The Central Bank of Nigeria has said that they're going to be buying corporate bonds. Yes. So they're stimulating. They have they, uh, they've decided that because com they've had the battle with the commercial banks, they've refused to let the real economy. Um, and the other day, I watched the governor of the Central mm. Bank of Nigeria. He said that they are thinking of capping commercial banks' investments in government securities because that's why. Oh, that, that's a, that would be interesting. I, I, I would want to see how they implement it. But if we had that, we would have a problem here, wouldn't we? Because they're the biggest buyer of government securities are the banks. <laughs> I think. Well, but you could. It's a conversation that needs to be 
to be put on the table. Yeah. It's conversion needs to be on the table. So I think the monetary policy, I think, in as far as the toolbox, the toolbox has so much materials that they can use. Mm. And I think they haven't unleashed, they call it the bazooka. Yes. They, they, I think they could do more. And I think that's, if the governor gets another term, I think his focus should be on how do we use monetary policy to jumpstart the supply side, to jumpstart the, the demand side. Yes. George Border, thank you so much. Nice speaking. A really good uh, conversation. Thank you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. And it's nice to have a conversation with you, Ali. Thank you. It's a pleasure. This was Metropole TV. This was The Smart Investor. My name is Ali Khan Satya, and it's been a pleasure having George in the studio today and having a really wide-ranging discussion about what are really important points in this economy. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m.